well, we may try to stay fit and in good health, but the fact is, as a population, we are getting older. And with that changing demographic, there are much greater demands on the healthcare system, challenges for acute and aged care, as well as the chronic diseases that come with advancing years. The healthcare sector, though, is changing with the times, with responsiveness, with innovative technologies and resilience to deliver better patient outcomes and even prevention. The role of the individual in being more responsible for their own health and the trend to deliver more care in the home are just some of the important stories we'll be covering over three episodes. This is Health Leader TV 2022. I'm Jo Pearson and in this first episode of Health Leader TV, we journey into the world of wearable digital health monitors, microscopy and virtual reality to explore how what were once considered to be future technologies are now delivering efficiencies and positive outcomes in preventative, clinical and surgical settings. Now, one of the most important environments for workflow efficiency is undoubtedly the operating theater. Now, what if you could add to that efficiency real-time input from a remote specialists who can see exactly what the surgeon sees? Well, new digital technology from OptiScan is enabling the sort of connected visual clarity that can better inform decision-making, reduce surgery times, and simplify workflows, as Stephen Claney discovered. Digital imaging solutions have become critical as operating rooms become more modern and more complex. A skilled surgical team relies on visual information. The speed of its delivery and the ability to share those images is crucial to immediate informed decision making. Sharing his excitement about his company's new digital technology, OptiScan Imaging CEO, Professor Camille Farah. Uh, absolutely blown away by its capability and its ability to image in vivo uh, live microscopic structures. OptiScan Imaging designs, manufactures and commercialises digital microscopic technology. Its goal? To support medical practitioners and researchers in providing better outcomes while saving time and money for healthcare providers. The innovations bring real-time feedback into the OR. That enables physicians and surgeons to make instantaneous decisions in the operating theatre, affecting positively the quality of life of patients, decreasing the burden on the healthcare system and improving patient outcomes. Global collaborations are underway with leading surgeons using this revolutionary confocal imaging technology. One is Professor Mark Pruhl, Director of Neurosurgery Research at the Barrow Neurological Institute in Arizona. Professor Pruhl is excited about the possibilities going forward using the digital probe with fluorescent dyes. If we can then tag those fluorescent dyes with specific molecular labels to actually label the cells that this probe system can see, that, that is nearly a holy grail in terms of uh, identifying the, these malignant cells that, that we need to get out. That would be an incredible advantage for these patients. He adds this live microscopic imaging technology can overcome current workflow inefficiencies. So what this is, is we're seeing these images of this tissue on the fly in real time. We can involve the pathologist who can also see these uh, tissue characteristics by these digital images that can be remoted to that pathologist and then a conversation in real time on the fly take part in the operating room with the neurosurgeon and the pathologist. That is an immense improvement potential for workflow in the operating room. These digital workflow improvements are also enthusiastically noted by leading breast surgeon Professor Bruce Mann trialling the technology in Melbourne hospitals. The summary is it's better for the surgeon, it's less stress for the patient, uh, and, and a better outcome for the hospital and the whole health system. The precision the instrument provides through clear, real-time microscopic images may help enable much better surgical outcomes for patients. 
Breast conserving surgery means removing the cancer with a cuff of normal tissue around it. The big challenge is to do that precisely. We need to take enough tissue so that the margins are negative, but we don't want to take so much that it affects the cosmetic result. That precision comes with miniaturisation. This scanner has over 100 parts in it. They're all made and assembled here by the technicians. Now that's miniaturisation. Dr Lindsay Busso, Optiscan's application and customer support manager, says it takes a skilled production team and a microscope to build a microscope. But its operation is simple. The use of the microscope is very, very easy. You can just pick it up and touch it against the tissue you want to see and you'll see images uh, of the microscopic structure of the tissue uh, in real time on the screen in front of you. Here we can see taste buds uh, and individual cells and cell nuclei on my tongue. These are the sorts of things that an oral medicine specialist would be looking for to make a determination of cancer. Optiscan Imaging is seeking collaborations to help bring its technology to the world. We believe the technology is absolutely critical to an efficient healthcare system and uh, we believe it will revolutionise healthcare. At a time when medical technologies and the demands on the sector are undergoing dynamic change, ongoing professional development and leadership are of critical importance. ACHSM President Dr Neil Fong spoke to Tim McMillan about the college's certification program and its strategies to help healthcare professionals hone their skills for the future. All of our associate fellows and fellows um, have basically continued in the certification program and now new members that are coming to the college are actually joining that program which requires them to do specific pieces of work. And going forward, how is the college adapting to provide healthcare professionals and management specialists with the skills they're going to need? It continues to change all the time. The healthcare industry is the most complex industry going around, so therefore the skills to match leading and managing in that space also need to change. Uh, the soft skills of leadership, the, the, the human skills about empathy and about communication and about compassion in leadership, not just kind of command and control. Uh, we're way beyond all of those aspects. So our college you know, provides um, the resources to help people in that space. The World Health Organization has thrown its weight behind the old adage that prevention is better than cure, to reduce chronic diseases such as diabetes, strokes, heart disease and cancer. Prevention can also play a major part in reducing the current stress on our doctors, nurses and health administrators. Reporter Stephen Claney joined the Sanoa Health Team in Melbourne who have developed a prevention-focused technology platform called Health and. To reduce the risks of chronic disease, disability and early death, preventative health is crucial and it will be digital tools that lead us in this fight. The real benefit here is actually getting information that is really relevant to making clinical care decisions into the hands of patients and into the hands of people in their clinical care teams. The challenge for Dr Shaper and others in this space is finding tools which grab the attention of the public, allowing them in an easy way to monitor and provide their personal health information. 90% of people want to participate in their own health care. They simply haven't had the tools to be able to do that. That excites me, that we've actually built that. Bob Biddle is CEO of Sanoa Health, which is developing Health End, an intelligent platform created with the support and input of doctors designed to empower people to manage their own health with their GP's support. We build digital technology to support people in better health. It's pretty much that simple. And that's to support consumers, patients, providers, business, insurance companies and government. Health End creates and monitors a personalised checklist based on age, gender and risk factors organised into a simple reminder system. You can keep track of vaccinations, allergies, fitness levels and upload documents for your records or to provide real-time lifestyle data to your doctor. The platform technology allows an effortless participation for people in monitoring and managing their own health care. 
It also educates, making a library of medical topics accessible by turning accurate but complex information into clear and simple animations. This is the pancreas, and this is what it looks like under a microscope. Meet Dr. Sanoa. We all know that prevention is better than cure, but why don't we do it? The animations in which he features may appear simple, but they represent years of work. They are clever, medically accurate, and are set to revolutionise how we approach our health care. We've used um, sort of our animation storytelling techniques and illustration techniques to, to communicate um, that complex information to, to our audience. The animations and the platform inputs were created under the watchful eye of leaders in the medical profession. Constantly through the process, we were checking in with the doctors and they would, you know, they would view the material that we were creating and, and, and approve that. Also top of mind across the whole platform, data security. The information input by the consumer is incredibly secure. It is encrypted and uploaded to AWS servers we can't access that information. That information is the consumer's alone and is theirs to do with as they please. Atticus Health is a primary healthcare organisation based in Melbourne. HealthEnd is currently being trialled by a number of GPs and patients at Atticus Health. Their mission is to really uh, bring forward and promote the cause of preventative healthcare and do that by leveraging technology. I found that to be a compelling idea and in step with the future of primary health care, so we're happy to get on board. Motivated patients helping track preventative health measures also frees up valuable GP time. It's the classic uh, sort of dilemma for a GP. You're wanting and you have the uh, aspiration to care about preventative health, but it is actually very hard in a limited period of time. That's the fact. So. For someone who runs overtime like me, it's very helpful. Wearable devices, it doesn't matter what brand, are becoming increasingly popular. They're also becoming more complex, collecting more data. That makes them a great fit for Health End. In the future, or now through Health End, that natural fit extends to the patient and their clinical care team. What we're going to see in the future is more and more collaboration between us as individual patients and consumers and people in our healthcare team so that we all are on the same page. And you know what I'm really looking forward to? A healthcare system that remembers me. Outcomes are generally good and you can expect to recover within a couple of weeks. Robotics, virtual technologies and telemedicine. You could say that they're tailor-made for a country like Australia with its vast distances and remote communities. And far from being intimidating for patients and health services managers alike, leaders in the sector agree that they're essential for a sustainable healthcare future. There's a lot of excitement around AI. There's a lot of excitement around technology, you know, drugs, vaccines, individualised medicine and diagnostic algorithms. Leaders are going to have to be across all of that, and I think all the leadership programs are addressing that, but we're flying blind. We don't actually have a lot of research about the best governance around this, how you implement at scale, um, and so it's going to be a big part of it, but there's a lot of uncertainty, and we have to be preparing leaders to lead in that uncertainty. We know that technology is um, a key platform uh, of how we harness various software programs, how we deliver, um, you know, telehealth, how we deliver uh, through virtual streams to be able to go in to our homes of where our clients are. We know that we relied on that heavily through COVID, um, but innovation and technology um, has to be harnessed. Otherwise, um, Aboriginal community controlled health organisations will be left behind once again if we're not up to uh, speed with what technology is doing in improving um, health. And what we know is that in the existing district health boards, we've had a whole myriad of different digital uh, approaches. We're looking to consolidate those again to improve outcomes for providers and patients by having a much more joined up unified strategy. I think it's absolutely fundamental. If we want to deliver healthcare that people want and that can be responsive, particularly in a workforce shortage over large distances, which is what we're trying to do, 
and people want in their home and they want to use the technology that they have available, we have to be agile and run with it and be digitally forward instead of waiting as laggards. And that's a risk that we all run. So what we're hoping and anticipating and looking forward to is taking forward the best ideas to actually leapfrog innovations to get us much further advanced, much more quickly. When we had 20 different districts, everybody had some good ideas. We're looking the best of breed, the best ideas to take those forward for the country. And we think that will help us advance much more quickly, much further. In our next episode, we look at how the sector is responding with ever improving quality and standards for a resilient and sustainable healthcare future. And if you want to share and review any of the interviews and films, you'll find them on the ACHSM website. There are some great health leader stories still to go, and I look forward to joining you again soon. Mm -hmm.